Welcome everyone to Beyond the Title. This is Kirsty here, joining you live all the way from Hong Kong. And thank you and what a pleasure to have you tune in to Insider's channel, where we really deep dive beyond the title twice a week with speakers who will be guests at our Reshape Summit happening on the 11th of June. Today we have the lovely Kat. Hi, Kat. Hi, Kirsty. Hi, thank you for having me. At pleasure at all. The Filipino from my nation, all the way from Manila. Would you like to uh, quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm Kat Trevino. I am the Chief Marketing Officer for My Nation, a mental health care company focused on creating happier, healthier employees in the workplace. I'm also a environmentalist. I work also with NGOs such as Planet Cora and also work in uh, as a brand marketing manager for a fast food brand. Amazing, cool. So I am, I have a first question for you. What is your Ikigai? And for those who don't know, it's uh, the reason, Japanese word for reason for being. Yeah, I was actually thinking about it this morning um, when you told me that the Ikigai is a reason that you jump out of bed every morning. And I was thinking like, well, what will make, what is making me jump out of bed every morning? For me, it's really, being able to make a difference and making a positive impact both to myself and also the community I live in and hopes to make it a little bit better. Yeah, so I would it's really agree. finding my purpose. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. And which movie character best represents you and why? Hmm. I I don't think it's a movie character. I think it's more of a series character, if that's okay. I, I always Absolutely. thought of myself, or like, I, I would um, relate to an April at Gate of Parks and Recreation. She's very withdrawn and honest and quite a unique sense of humor, but also um, in a way, um, movie-wise, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, The Intern with Anne Hathaway. Oh, yes. Yeah, something Definitely like that. Sure. It's an intern with that very girl boss mm -hmm. vibe and a soft heart for not only elders, but those generally those in need. So those are the two characters that I, I relate to the most. Amazing. And what app could you not live without um, and why? Since I guess we've all been working from home. Right. I, I think it's been three months now, no? Um, <laughs> delivery apps, Grab delivery, uh, definitely. Uh, I have not been able to keep my hands off uh, online shopping or e-commerce uh, apps as well. <laughs> but more than anything, the my Telegram app or my um, messaging apps, I connect with those that matter to me the most there. And I also do have this um, app called Focus To Do. It's a to-do list, but with countdown and alerts and reminders. It's, it's just so easy for me to get distracted when I'm at home. So I do need that sort of blinder to keep me focused. Ooh, good, great suggestion. I'm gonna try that out myself after today. Haven't heard of that app. Awesome. And how about one advice that you would give to your 20 year old self? Right. Uh, I guess I would give, uh, around that time I was about start, still starting out with my career and I feel like the best advice that I would give is to stay curious and empathic and try to be as independent as much as possible. There are so many things today that I wish I had done earlier also, but I know that, uh, you know, every, each time has a purpose and everybody has their own pace but if it were really me speaking to my 18 year old selves i'd tell her to really just jump the gun and stop letting the insecurities get the best of her i would definitely agree with that advice really starts at, at any age not only just 21 i guess okay. awesome and now another interesting one for you your hostage feedback that you've ever received that would be from myself I had always, well, in the past and in, until, until now, I, I constantly struggle with not feeling that I was ever good enough or, you know, um, that I 
um, worthy of certain things. I struggle with what some people would call an imposter syndrome, feeling like you're not supposed to be in the place you're in, feeling that you're always uh, not worthy of, of praise, of all the achievements. And I let those little things get me down. And I, in the past, I also did struggle with some mental health concerns before. And it was very hard for me to hear that, especially from people that matter to me the most, that I have been labeled incapable or unfit to work, even though I was high performing. It's actually what pushed me to get on the mental health space for organizations specifically. It's not that that person who told me that was ill-intentioned or anything. It's just that the person was not informed. And especially here in the Philippines, mental health is still taboo. They automatically think of it as uh, likened to a, a grave sickness that will make you incapable to perform as much as you could. They didn't know how to deal with people like this on concerns of mental health. So if anything, uh, and looking at it now in hindsight, the harshest feedback has only pushed me to be one step, uh, one step backwards, two steps forward. Absolutely. And I think it's also proof that, you know, being able to accept harsh feedback, whether it's to yourself or getting an honest critique from someone else, it can really shape the person that you are. Um, and I completely agree with what you've said for sure. Awesome. And how about the biggest leadership challenge that you faced since this current crisis? Oh, my. I, I speak as a, we're still relatively new. My nation is still relatively new. And in terms of the team, I guess the, the challenge is creating that space for productivity and creating that motivation to keep going. It's really a tough time. Uh, and we always say during our webinars that, you know, you shouldn't force yourself to be productive. We are going through a crisis after all. There's so many things that uh, it's, it's different ways of us to, uh, coping in different situations at home. So we shouldn't be forcing ourselves to be productive because there's so many people now that are saying, you know, you're just at home. You might as well take on a new project, et cetera. That's not always the case. But mm -hmm. the challenge for businesses specifically is, you know, for them to be able to keep afloat, we have to make sure our employees are also emotionally prepared for the changes to be able to move the company forward. And that's something that we're, we're continuously learning. We mm -hmm. are not really pushing the boundaries that they have to, they have to work, they have to do 100%, but to try to do their best and give them more understanding and give them the assistance and the support that they need as well. Absolutely, absolutely. How about what are your predictions for the new norm and the digital word 2.0? Great impact of coronavirus on mental health. There's with more people in crisis. It's not the, the people that are victims fall out from coronavirus has created such high levels of stress for everyone physically, psychologically, professionally with people that are also being offloaded uh, and also financially. And again, we have developed various coping habits to deal with the stress. And as you said earlier, we're on our, what, third, entering fourth month of, of the lockdown or whatever quarantine that uh, our, com our countries and our communities are in. These habits that we've developed, they won't di disappear overnight. So in any chance that uh, this global pandemic ends tomorrow or ends next week, the habits that we've formed are also something that's, it's not just going to be easily erased and changed. So, it, you know, speaking also as a corporate manager and an environmentalist, COVID may not even be the last crisis this generation will ever face. We also have a global recession and climate change in tow. So, Personally, for me, mental health care will be for both in the workplace and in the public will definitely play a huge role in the coming years with hopefully more accessible service, more value and people put, putting more importance to it. We need everybody, people's teams prepared for the changes and the stresses that come with the pandemic and with the, everything that's going to happen in the near future. And for a digital world 2.0, if anything, this is only going to move companies to become more agile and to hasten their digital transformation and think of how their businesses and services can be better and 
more flexible enough to withstand these worst case scenarios. So what do you think will, will change permanently in your industry then? And what do you think, you know, are changes that are here to stay then in that respect? Right. Uh, I do definitely feel that for me, the mental health industry, like I mentioned earlier, there's going to be a greater push towards uh, policies or employee policies that will be placed for companies as well. Um, we are also already seeing as early as now people more and more uh, brands and more and more uh, team leaders that are interested in availing of services like Mind Nations or generally psychologist services to support their teams. Uh, in terms of digital, definitely e-commerce is going to only be a lot stronger. It's going to be a, play a greater role. And hopefully, uh, people will, companies will also see the impact of work from home as a viable method. Like there are a lot of people that, you know, finally see the, the benefits or the, the, yeah, the benefits of, of how work from home can also be helpful in how they do their uh, work as well. Very nice. And Kat, so what is your hopes for the future then? Oh my goodness. I, I, <laughs> if anything, I, I, really, I really hope that uh, we find better ways to deal with crisis uh, for both companies and uh, ourselves personally. The crisis management or you know, the way we cope has always been in the backseat. Nobody really sees the importance of, of mental health or in putting together a, a backup plan until we're actually in a crisis. So there are so many things that now we're realizing are more efficient when, when we plan it out. And I hope that we do finally get to give the planet and the people the kind of love, empathy, and care that it deserves. So I, I'm very hopeful. I'm very hopeful that that things will turn out for the better if we're only learning from here. Absolutely, we must stay positive together and support each other from yes. around the globe. Absolutely. Okay, so I have uh, one of my favorite questions actually, bit of a sidetrack here. One weird <laughs> fact, one weird fact about you. Oh my goodness, uh, there's so <laughs> many weird, I am generally so weird person I feel. Um, as Huh, how do I, what do I say? Weird is beautiful. I would. In my opinion. It, it is, it is, it is. Um, I would say like this weird fact about me is kind of, people would really find it annoying because I, I do love to read. I do love to stay informed. And um, there are a lot of times, and I, I try to really be a positive person, but sometimes I couldn't help myself that whenever someone says, um, certain facts or positive things and I always try I end up trying to like give a wikipedia type ex, um, explanation of how it goes etc just walking explanation like and I'm not the best person to have around during parties and they're just like okay oh, I don't think I don't think it's uh, it's it's a it's a weird thing it's more of an annoying thing but <laughs> yeah I'm just nah, like that's definitely walk. not weird. I think that just makes you <laughs> someone who's perfectionist and you want to learn all the time and you're always trying right. yourself to be better and you're, I guess you're, you're translating that in, in that sense, right? Right. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. And I have one final question for you, actually, to end uh, on an interesting note. So what's your motto in life then? Yeah. Um, it's always to use the gifts or the skills that you are blessed with for good. There are always going to be ways of opportunities for you to help. At the start, I, I've always thought that helping or you know, philanthropists were, uh, activities that philanthropists do were only activities and luxuries that are done by people who can finance it or who can afford. We are all bl blessed and built with very unique life experiences, learnings. We have different ways that we were brought up. And all these things can, we can channel and leverage to motivate and inspire and 
aid those in need. All we really have to do is be a little more creative and genuinely curious about everything. Amazing. What a way to end today's live feed, Kat. Feeling very <laughs> inspired and I hope uh, the audience out there listening or will listen has is, is been inspired by your, your, your boss lady power. Thank you, Kat, once again for joining us today and thank you thank virtual you, listeners. Christy. My pleasure for tuning in at Beyond the Title. Coming soon in the digital room near you and be sure to check out our speakers where Kat is also featured and where we really rethink and reimagine at Reshaped happening on 11th of June. I am Kirsty from Beyond the Title and thank you for listening. See you soon.